it, it wasn't a surprise it ended up in Tampa. But what is surprising is that Bruce Arians, just keep it a buck, man. You said no a couple of months ago. You changed your mind now to bring in Antonio Brown with all of his baggage only because you knew, look, even if Brady didn't call you in the middle of the night begging and pleading for you to do it, the only reason you bring in Antonio Brown, knowing what we all know about Antonio Brown, and I'm strictly just talking about his between the lines and locker room behavior. I'm not even talking about the right. investigations. I'm not even talking about that yet. But knowing what you knew about Antonio Brown to begin with and why you had reservations about him before, the only reason you sign him is because of 12. And I'm not just talking about to appease 12. Not just because you think you're, you know, you're, you're beat up at the position and you know you look great on paper, but Godwin and 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 uh, and, and Evans and Miller are all playing hurt. I'm not even talking about that. You bring him in because you know that 12 will keep him in line, which goes back to him being the best employee there is. Is because you know that as as a, as another old friend of ours like to say, he's a force multiplier. That if no, if Antonio Brown listens to anybody, he's gonna listen to Tom Brady. Brady is going to be able to get through to him. Brady will put his arm around him or put his foot in his behind, whichever one is necessary, to keep Antonio Brown in line. That's why you sign him. Not every quarterback. There are other quarterbacks who may be willing to put up with Antonio Brown's shenanigans. Yeah. There may be other quarterbacks who could check Antonio Brown. But Brady is a combination of not only will I, and I'm, am I willing to put up with it, I'm not going to put up with it. He's not going to cross me. And I'm willing to put in the work that it takes to keep him in check. So when Arian says Brady funny. had nothing to do with it, Brady, had, Brady yeah. had everything to do That's with it in terms of him wanting Antonio, but you knowing that, hey, man, you got him? Cool. I ain't got to worry about that. 12 got that. No, it's funny. It's funny that he said uh, Antonio Brown has matured. Since since you said you weren't interested in having him on the Buccaneers, no, he has not matured. Uh, that's not why he's on the roster. Now, yes, Brady does have the best relationship with Antonio Brown. I don't know if I'm willing to go as far as you, you did, saying, hey, Brady's going to do this, Brady's going to do that. I don't know what Brady's going to be able to do with Brown. I don't know. I think Brady's got the best chance. Willing. Oh, he's got the best willingness. Chance. I'm talking about his okay. willingness, whether he would succeed. And if Antonio Brown is still the guy that he was and hasn't changed or isn't humbled or isn't desperate or doesn't realize that this is his last chance, okay? If he's not, if anybody can get through to him, it's Brady. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying he will succeed. Right, and I'm and, saying and, that. And, and if anybody's willing to do it, it's Tom Brady, clearly, because Brady loves him for whatever reason. And we were talking about, you know, game changers. And, and one of the things, and we've talked about this the last couple of weeks because Le'Veon Bell, former Steeler, going to Kansas City, and now Antonio Brown going to the Buccaneers. Here's one thing. This that, is so much fun. I know. One thing Antonio Brown hasn't had in a full season, no matter who it is, he, he just hasn't had a down season. He hasn't had one of those seasons where you go, Ah, okay, that's all right. That's all right. When he's yeah. out there, in other words, when he's out there, he's the best. And if you don't think he's the best, I do. I think he's, when he's playing his game, I think he's the best receiver in football. But let's say if you don't think he is, he's a top five talent. So yeah. you add, if he's out there and you got a top five talent to an offense that is already ridiculous, it's ridiculous. going at a high level and scored a bunch of points yeah. yesterday uh, against the Raiders, I told you, and you know, my bet's your money. I told you that was going to happen. Anyway, uh, if you got you add that guy, you add that guy to that offense, it's unfair. now that really is an unstoppable offense because they can do everything. You want to go back to franchise run, mode? Yes, and they can't They pass. can. You want to go back to franchise mode? Like, I wouldn't let you do that. Like, if we were franchise, and I wouldn't <laughs> do that. Like, if we were franchising the right. Bucks and Antonio yeah. Brown's a free agent, I'd be like, nah, that's just... That's too much. That's just that's, that's cheap. Yeah, that's, that's not real. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, no, we can't. That's, that's, yeah, gotta, exactly. Like that's just that, 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 that doesn't look right. You know, paper. Like, come on, man. We try to just sign to every free agent out there. Yeah. You can't just go. We try to just approximate what would Fournette. really happen. Right. You can't get Leonard Fournette in free agency. You can't get you know Antonio Brown in free agency. You can't get Rob Gronkowski. It's like yeah, that's just a stack. We stack in the deck. We when, when I was growing up in New Orleans, we used to call that comp. You know, and I don't even know what that means. We just got to ask Comp. Y'all got, when all the good players will be on one team, 
Mm-hmm. They got too many good players. They, they have, it'd be too stacked. Like, nah, y'all got caught. We got we to pick over. We got to start this over. That's what the Bucks look like right now. But going back to keeping a buck for a second, you know, it's talk about the off the field, the, the assault uh, allegations, investigations, civil suits. It's, it's, it's so wild, I can't keep, can keep track of him. I'm not even going to bother. Look it up if you want all the background on it. Like, he's, he still could face additional league discipline beyond the eight games he's already been suspended, right? What I, what I found interesting about it, because we know that organizations, if you could play well enough, they'll give you another chance. That's right. Because uh, they could yeah. always they could always sell the narrative of he's learned, he's matured, you know, he's 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 paid his debt, he's he's served his punishment, you know. They could, that always flies at a press conference, right? You know why it flies? Because um, nobody really cares, and that's what I want just all of us to keep it a buck about. Like nobody cares. Nobody cares if you hit women. We just we just don't collectively. We just don't. We never have. Because if we did as a society, the punishment would be much more severe. But it's just not. Right? Both criminally and professionally. And I've long since stopped looking to the NFL to be the arbiter or the harbinger, whatever the, or whatever I'm looking forward to, to, to of, 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 you know, to, to protect our society against men who put their hands on women. Because if you're good enough, you will always get a job. And I'm not even advocating for somebody to be, to be banned for life for it. I don't know that necessarily have a position on whether or not they should ever play again. What I do know is that that has never been enough to stop a team from signing a player again if he's good enough. But what, what's interesting about this particular story, because typically we, we lay that at the feet of the organization. We say, you know, whether it's a GM, a coach, if they, you know, they can help them when they're going to sign them. It doesn't yes, stop there because I do there. believe Bruce Arians. I do believe Bruce Arians when he said that he talked to all the players on the team and asked, do you want him on the team? I don't think their fellow players care. I think that the fellow players look at it as, can this dude help us win? What he does with his women or, or his personal life is his business. That's none of my business. They're all quite comfortable drawing a line. You disagree or, you, or, or is that a... a, a, a you say, well, you well, say I'm, no, well, I'm saying, say? yeah, I, I'm, I'm shaking my head like... The shaking my head is not disagreement. It is... It's like a shame. That's a shame. But yeah, no, there you, is you some, understand what I'm saying? But I do have stand some on the table and say... None of them stand on the table, Michael, and say, no, on principle, I cannot play with a, a, a person I'm not sure who's that's accused fair. of doing what he's done. I'm not sure that's I don't, fair, though. And I'm not, I'm not saying I expect them to, either. Don't get me wrong. I'm well, not saying I expect Tom Brady to stand up and say, no. I do. No, I do I expect Tom Brady okay, to. Great. Yes, I do. Go for it. Go I do. I At expect this point, it. I don't. Because, yeah. because if you say he's going to be the greatest, for, for the greatest employee in the history of employment, right, if you're going to be that, and you're going to be somebody who was advocating for somebody to be on your roster, to be on their team, and you're going to vouch for who they are. If they're, if your team is going to sign him, because I, I, I'm not about bans either, just a, a flat-out ban, but yeah. I think you have a responsibility. Either Brady could say it, or he can encourage Antonio Brown to acknowledge what he's done and to speak about where he is in his process. In other words, yes, uh, I have made some mistakes. I've made some mistakes in my life, and this is where I am right now. And this is why I'm confident that I'm not going to do this again because I have realized that I- I've been too violent. I've, b- I've been too dismissive. I- I've been too casual. But I told you they don't care. And, I, okay, you, and maybe that's unrealistic. That they, they, yeah, that's totally unrealistic. Right. Totally okay, but, but this is like, what they this got is their where own I think you're unfair. To deal with. This is work, I bro. This is, this is work. where you're they're unfair, not coming though. to work trying to look at people's transgressions and police what they're doing in their personal lives. Or well, they, well, if you're Tom I, well, Brady, if you're well, Tom Brady, you're sitting there saying, if I don't right? sign him, hold on. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Wait a minute. So are you saying that's the case in pro sports, or that is that how every job is? Or are we just talking about pro sports? I think that's the majority of workplaces, the vast majority of workplaces, but specifically in pro sports, where we assign some kind of moral authority to these leagues when it comes to, okay, you committed X transgression. You should no longer have the privilege. Remember, it's a right. It's a privilege, not a right. The privilege of playing this professional sport that you get paid for the, the, the best players get to play. You should never have, and I'm, I'm speaking sarcastically here. They should, you shouldn't be able to do it because of what you, what the, the, whatever transgression you committed. Now, what, and there are a lot of employers throughout I, society. I, I don't disagree with that. 
But there are a lot of there are a lot of employers. But I'm saying this. You may you may think that that's how it should be. I'm telling you like it is. To quote Andre 3000, I'll tell it like it is, and I'll tell you how it could be. You telling me how it should be. I'm telling you how it is, but you know that all of that is BS. None of them sit around, because if, I'll tell you this right now. Tom Brady's sitting there saying, he may not agree with Antonio Brown's life choices, but Tom Brady's sitting there right now saying, just, look, he might have been watching Brother from Another on, on Friday, being like, I'm not going to sit back and let Russell Wilson Always get does. this dude. I'm not going to sit back and let Aaron Rodgers get this dude. I'm watching what the Ravens are doing in the ASC. I'm watching what Patrick Mahomes is doing getting Le'Veon Bell. Antonio Brown's out there. I'm going to let the league deal with his whatever punishment he has. If he's available, bring him here. He can help us, bring well, him here. What I'm saying is that it's not just a GM and a coach making these decisions. I'm saying players, fellow players, are not. As much as we like to think that they're sitting up there judging Antonio Brown about I his on or off the field transgressions. The very few. Few and far between. They're looking no, at I that think, dude think, that you just no, said is the best receiver in the NFL saying he can yeah. help me do my job better and he can get us to the Super Bowl. Uh, on every roster, I think there are probably... So let's go with the old school, the traditional uh, pre-COVID additions. Let's go with the 53-man roster. Mm -hmm. On a 53-man roster, I'm going to estimate there are about 10 guys on every 53-man roster that could potentially have the ear of the head coach and the general manager. So, yeah, uh, uh, out of those 10, those top 10 on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with, with Tom Brady being number one, maybe in front of the head coach and general manager, uh, mm. are, are enough people protesting the presence of Antonio Brown? No. But I'm sure there are some guys on that roster who are, say, who are saying, I, I don't want to play with this guy, whether it is self-preservation, he's playing my position, and I, don't, and I want to keep getting my uh, receptions, or, hey, I just don't like what he represents, but it doesn't matter because they're player number 29, player number 34, 35, and no matter what you say, and when you're there, you're not really going to affect decide policy. To say it. If they even yeah. decide to say it in that position, to your point. They may, they may think it deep down in places they don't talk about at parties, but they're probably not, not enough to, to speak. But I think it's a shame, though. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.